So the game I'm playing today is called Mendel. Now, this game is a little bit difficult to describe, but the best way I can put it is that it's a walking simulator slash gardening game where you take control of a little space probe that has landed on a remote island on an alien planet. The only real thing you can do with the space probe is inspect the flora that inhabits said island. Now, of course, given that I'm absolutely horrendous at explaining things, I'm obviously giving a very oversimplified explanation as to what the game is about, but one of the really neat aspects of this game is that you can remove flowers from all of the plants on the island, which doesn't damage the plants because the flowers will just grow back instantly, and you can essentially splice the genes of every plant on the island. You can take two different flowers and you can combine their genes or their genetics in order to create a brand new type of plant. So the main gameplay that Mendel revolves around is trying to splice genes of each individual plant and just seeing how combining two different flowers together, like two flowers of two completely different species, would cause a brand new plant to grow, or what sort of plant it would cause to grow. It's actually pretty neat. Now, admittedly, there's not much to this game, because as as with most of these walking simulator kinds of games, there really isn't a lot to them. Mendel is meant to be another one of those like relaxing chill out kinds of games, but unlike some other relaxing chill out kinds of games that I've covered on my channel before, there is no element of failure, there is no way to die in this game. There are cliffs that you can fall off of, but your space probe will not get damaged by it. There's also water surrounding the island as well, but your little space probe will just float over it. So the main goal of this game is to just explore the entire island, see what different sorts of plant species you could find, and basically splice their genes in order to create all sorts of weird mutated plants. And that's about it, honestly. The main reason why I wanted to play this is because, one, I really like the game's art style in particular, because it kind of reminds me of some other walking simulator games I've covered on my channel a long, long time ago, like uh, Paradis Perdu, for instance, if any of you remember when I played that a couple years ago, but I also wanted to play this game today just for a little change of pace because I've been playing a lot of like very fast-paced, action-oriented games as of late. So just to provide a bit of a counterbalance, I wanted to play something just nice, relaxed, and very chilled out, and something that isn't, like, frustrating or isn't meant to be overly frustrating, or just frustrating at all. Because, I mean, I did play Scalic and Up Left Out recently, which were meant to be, like, relaxing puzzle games, but I mean, if you don't have the brightest mind like me, then those puzzle games can tend to get frustrating at times, just a little bit. So I wanted to play play something today where you can just, you know, go into the game world, just have a good time, relax, and just let all your worries wash away for the moment. I'm describing this as if it's some sort of, like, weird ASMR thing, but it's not that, I promise. Alright, so with that being said, we are gonna get started right away. I am actually going to restart here because I do want to, uh, just reset the entire island because I have been messing around with this a little bit off-screen. I don't believe the island that you land on is randomly generated. I think you land on the exact same island every single time. I think the restart feature is just if you want to, like, start over from scratch, which is what we're gonna do. Yeah, this will delete your old island. That's okay. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is today. Chinese proverb. Also has these sort of like, like, philosophical quotes as well. Again, one of those games that's trying to be a little bit artsy-fartsy, but anyway, we're gonna prepare the island. I wanted to restart this because there is a little bit of a cutscene that plays at the beginning of the game. Preparing Kepler-186F Biological Probe. Mission, Gather, Grow, Experiment, Launch. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna launch. Hopefully my CPU doesn't explode. Oh god, it's exploding. Okay, well that's- that's fine. We might still be able to power through this either way. Yeah, so here we are in the world of Mendel. So, like I said, I do believe that this island is not randomly generated, because I think you land on the same island every single time. Again, I could be wrong about that, and for those of you who may be more knowledgeable about this game than I am, which might not be too many people, because this game is relatively obscure, uh, please let me know. But we are gonna land here. Okay, my CPU is actually sort of calming down now, good. So we're just gonna land right here, just a nice soft landing on this island. 
mission, gather, grow, experiment, use the WAS and D keys to move, but the arrow keys also work as well. Use the mouse to look around, press escape for the menu and other controls. So yeah, th this is just the menu right here. So you got some other options like inverted look and V-Sync. Uh, you definitely want V-Sync enabled if you don't want your CPU to burst in the flames. Also, I forgot to mention when this game came out. This game has not been out for that long. It came out in September of last year. There was also an update for this game that came out earlier this year, but that was all the way back in January, so hasn't been updated in a little while, but still wanted to play it regardless. Also, for being a walking simulator type game, it is actually kind of pricey. It costs about $10. I'm still not 100% sure if that $10 price tag is fully justified, but for now, let's just go and explore the landscape right here. So, you have a lot of flat shaded polygons here that make up the actual landscape, which is why I compared it to Parody Perdue, because it's basically the same art style, or at least a very similar one. I have no idea what these random geometric shapes are in the sky. Actually, looking at the sky here, the sky's art style kind of reminds me of Forma 8 now that I look at it. This just reminds me of all sorts of games that I've played on my channel before. But you have all these flowers right here, and they look kind of boring, right? So what we can do is that we can left click to pick a flower off of the plant. We can also right click in order to pick up the flower and move it somewhere else. Oh yeah, this game also has auto saving by the way. From time to time you'll see that message down below that says saving, please do not quit the game. If you press the Q key, you can also name a species. So you can type pretty much anything that you want into here. Uh, just for the sake of not embarrassing myself, I am not going to name the species anything because I I've mentioned before that I'm not very creative when it comes to coming up with names. It's one of the reasons why whenever I play a Pokemon game, I almost never nickname my Pokemon. I'm sorry if that makes me incredibly boring, but I just I just don't have a lot of good names. Not a lot of very unique and creative names that I can just come up with on the spot. So anyway, we're gonna go and actually uh, pick up one of these flowers. So left click to pick it up. There's this little, uh, I don't even know what you would call this, but little little square that gets launched out of the space probe's left hand and goes and picks up the flower. And you can pick up quite a few flowers here. I am actually gonna go and like pick up a couple of them right now. Pick up a couple of different ones. Because I mean, you can also combine flowers with the same types of flower, but all it's gonna do is gonna create the exact same plant. What I would like to do is go over here to this tree, pick off a flower from, from the branch right here. Yeah, so I do believe that you can hold up to six flowers at a time. I'm gonna go and uh, test that theory out. I'm not sure if that's accurate in the slightest, but go and pick this one up over here. There we go. Just add it to my arm. Just stick them onto my arm. We can also go up here. Yeah, so you can press the space bar to, I guess, activate some sort of jetpack. It sort of launches you into the air. It only lasts for about a second, and then you come crashing back down to Earth. Like I said before, though, you can't die in this game. There is no falling damage. There's definitely a lot of cliffs that you can fall off of, but it, you, you, your little space probe can't die. Your little space probe cannot die here. Also, once again, I feel like I'm slurring a lot of my words already. <laughs> a lot of these trees also don't have actual collision on them either. Yeah, apparently you pick up a lot of speed when you're sliding down a slope, though. Go over here to this beach. Got some interesting little flowers over here. Yeah, so I, I do believe that there are some other types of, uh, some other types of plants that are hiding over there. Uh, behind those mountains. We're gonna go and see them over there in just a moment, but I want to demonstrate how exactly the gene splicing mechanics in this game work. So in order to plant a new flower, all you have to do is just look at the ground, left click, and then you can select a plant, or you can select a parent in particular to plant down. So as I mentioned before, you can combine these flower heads with different flower heads in order to create mutated plants, and that's kind of the entire point of Mendel. The entire point is to experiment and see what sorts of mutated plants you can create with these different combinations. So we'll choose this flower first, and then this one over here. You can only combine two flowers with each other, though. You can't combine, like, more than more than two. Like, unfortunately, you can't combine all six of them here. But there's gonna be a new plant that starts to grow, and we might as well place, like, all of them down right now. You know, just, just to not waste time. Just to not waste time. 
There we go, because time is valuable, time is money, after all. So now you'll notice that we did actually create a new type of flower right here. So this is like a combination of this little plant right here, and uh, these like long blue plants with seemingly only one leaf on them. So when we combine those two together, it creates this. So then what we can do after that is that we can actually pick up the mutated flower and we can combine it with something else in order to create an even bigger mutation. Also, it's really nice actually looking at these plants grow in real time. They do grow a lot faster than they would like actual plants in the real world. Just seeing all those flowers blooming and oh my god, dude, wait. This one is like really tall. Yeah, this plant that I created right here is really tall. Okay, it was taking a little while for the flowers to actually grow on it and holy crap, man. I'm actually kind of impressed by what I created right here. I mean, look at this. I think it's a combination of uh, those plants down there and also, uh, I don't even remember what I combined it with, but I think one of those trees over there. Oh yeah, I think it was like one of those large trees. Like up on top of that hill. That is weird. Okay, hang on a second. I want to take you, because we're going to create like a like a double mutation here. Combine a mutated a mutated flower with another mutated flower. And we're going to see what we can make here. So yeah, this is pretty much the entire gameplay of Mendel though, guys. Just combining these flower heads and seeing what it produces. In some cases, you can combine mutated flowers with other mutated flowers to just, you know, if you just want to be an absolute madman, if you want to just go completely crazy with the concept of evolution. Mendel also has another interesting gameplay mechanic in which new plants will spawn on the Rowan if you leave the game alone for a little while. Like, if you have the game turned off for a while and you come back to it, there is a chance that new plants will have grown on your island. I'm not really sure if this is like a false equivalency or anything, but at risk of making a false equivalency, it's kind of like, uh, it, it kind of has that, like, clicker game sort of mechanic where new things will happen even if you leave the game turned off. Like, when you turn the game back on and come back to it, there might have been some new things that have happened. I guess it's kind of similar to that, but maybe it's not, and I'm just, I'm just talking out of my ass, who knows. But either way, we have, uh, kind of pretty flowers right here. Wow, I'm actually... I'm actually kind of mesmerized by this one. Yeah, so you can also press the tab key, by the way, to, uh... Yeah, look at all of the named species. You have not named any species, though. So when you do name a brand new species, it'll appear in this catalog. This also tells you what version number uh, the game is currently in, by the way. Version 1.0.2. That's actually the current version of the game right now. Like I said, this game has not been updated since January, though, so it's been been a little while since anything new was added, and I think the most recent update was just a bug fix update. You can also press the one key to take a screenshot, like if you if you come across a plant that you that you think is truly mesmerizing and truly beautiful to look at, well, you can take a screenshot to, to treasure it for the remainder of time. But why would I need to take a screenshot when I'm already recording a video so I'll be able to look back on this like five years from now and think, yeah, I created some, some beautiful plants here. I created some beautiful crossbred plants. Oh my god, dude, what in the world is this thing right here? What did I even make here? My goodness gracious. Yeah, um, it does seem like some of these are kind of like phasing through the ground. I don't want to say that it seems obvious this game was made on a budget, but it seems obvious that it was made on a budget. Right, so how about I plant this right here, because I want to see what, what this combination creates. This is also, once again, like, two mutated flowers right here. So we're gonna see what exactly this creates. If you listen closely, too, you'll also notice that, uh, it makes sounds whenever the plant is growing. Like, you can actually hear the... you can hear the stem growing in real time, and, uh... The sounds are a little bit disturbing, I will admit. Also, you can just stand right in the plant as it's growing if you want to, like, get a really, real close-up angle on it. Oh, there's, there's my little flowers. Oh my god. Holy crap, boys. Okay. Well, when you're, when you're standing, like, really close to it, it makes the flowers look a lot larger than they actually are. But either way, I'm gonna take this, and what else should I combine this with? Maybe I could try combining it with... Like, this mutated plant right here? Yeah, sure. Wanna take another flower off of you. It doesn't take as long to remove flowers from the plant when you're, like, standing right next to it, or even inside of it in some cases. 
I also don't believe that this game has a day and night cycle. It kind of seems like the sun is setting on our island right here, or on this alien planet, but I don't believe that this game actually has a day and night cycle of any sort. It doesn't get brighter or darker at any point. But the sky certainly looks pretty though, I'll at least give it that. Still have no idea what those, like, random triangles in the sky are. Really not sure what the significance of that is. Also the significance of why they're changing color. Maybe they're meant to be clouds. I have no idea. I'm not sure if you're able to just leave this island altogether. Like, if you're able to go outside the boundaries of the island and just head on out into the ocean in search of more islands, possibly? Oh man. Okay. Wow, that's... that's... It's, it's like, multicolored. Yeah. These, these, these little flowers have like three different colors on them. Ooh, that's nice. That's really nice. I want to take that. I want to take that. Maybe I'll also take you as well. I'm like really messing with nature right now. Good lord. These are powers that no human being should ever possess. Right, so I'm going to create like one more combination here, and then we're going to go and explore the remainder of the island. Because there are other types of plants that I'd like to show you guys here. Because it's not just these. But it is still really neat though. Like, you combine different flowers and you create new kinds of plants. It's all about experimenting. And I guess you also know why this kind of... Or I'm like sort of attracted to this to this game as well. Because the fact that you can create like all these different types of plants here. And there are seemingly limitless possibilities as to what type of plants you can create. It kind of reminds me of No Man's Sky in that regard. Like the fact that all of the flora and fauna in No Man's Sky is like procedurally generated. I mean, even though the flora in this game is not procedurally generated as far as I'm aware. But given the fact that you can uh, essentially combine mutated flower- Like you can create mutated variations of plants and then you can combine the mutated variations with other mutated variations to create seemingly endless variants of plants. It kind of feels like No Man's Sky in that regard and I mean just the fact that you're on an alien planet investigating the flora that's inhabited on it. I mean, one can't help but feel reminded of No Man's Sky in that regard. Or at least I can't help but feel reminded by it. So I think what I am going to do now is maybe take one of these flowers with me. And I'm actually gonna plant this somewhere else. We're gonna go- we're gonna go exploring for a little bit. I'm not going to plant you over there because I would like to go and investigate this other part of the island over here, beyond these orange mountains. And by the way, you can actually, uh, you can in fact plant flowers on top of the, uh, the mountains over here. Like, if you want, you want to plant it directly onto the summit, also, uh, uh, wait, can I not move? Um, yeah, this game, by the way, I should mention that this game doesn't have, uh, the best collision detection, because sometimes your space probe can get stuck, and you'll be unable to move unless you jump. Like, jumping is the only way that you can get unstuck when you are stuck. Also, when you're on top of the mountain right here, you can get a nice, a nice view of the remainder of the island. Like, look at this, for goodness sakes. You can see some, some other plants down there, which we're gonna investigate in just a minute. But yeah, you can get a nice glimpse of the rest of the island. You'll also notice that there are some, some plants hiding in, on those uh, mountains over there. Yeah, there's a little beach area right over there that we're gonna go explore in just a minute. But I did want to show you that you can, in fact, Plant the flower right on top of the mountain right here. And is it gonna give me give me some flowers, please? Oh no, it's it's not done growing yet. Ooh, check this out. Oh my goodness, look at this. Did I create roses? Kind of looks like I did. I will take that. Thank you very much. Yes, indeed. Why wouldn't I? Yeah, so the entire goal of this game is to basically populate the entire island with flowers. I kind of wish, though, that the islands were procedurally generated. You know, that way it could give you a little bit of variety and maybe some replay value. But I do believe that it is the exact same island that you're exploring the entire time, and that can cause the game to get a little repetitive after a while, I will admit. But man, dude, even though the game has such simple visuals, it still looks absolutely gorgeous. Like all these different plants, all swaying in the wind as well, and the water. Again, just goes to show that graphics are not everything when it comes to video games. It's all about the atmosphere. You can also see the mutated plants that I made down over there. Anyway, let's go to this little beach area right here because I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go mess with biology again. There we go, we're just gonna slide down here. So we have these types of plants. Yeah, 
Um, I think I want to at least pick one of your flowers. I will take that one. Thank you very much. There we go. A little blue one there. I don't know about you, but it kind of reminds me of a, like, a Reese's peanut butter cup. Which is probably why I'm attracted to these, to these plants in particular. Because they have the most unique looking out of all the different flower types. I do believe you can plant some flowers directly in the water. So you know what? I was about to go and try that. I have no idea how far out I can actually move here. Okay, it's pretty far out apparently. You know what? Let's try, uh, wait, can I actually? Oh yeah, I can. Uh, well, I sort of can. Okay, fine. Let's let's plant it in here. Plant it in the water. Directly in the water. So at least that way, uh, well, you'll have something to sustain yourself. So you won't die. And I'm gonna hope that's working, but I can't really tell, especially since the water's getting in the way. Oh god, what am I creating here? Okay, that's a pretty big stock. Uh, just give me a moment. I would like to go and, and maybe pick this as well. Because I can combine these guys with each other too. These these two different types of plants that I'm seeing right now. So let me go and take you. Yeah, there's that other plant that I uh, that I planted on top of the mountain, on top of the summit. Here we are, and I'm gonna plant you like right here. Sure, why not? Because essentially what we can do is that we can create this plant right here, but with these types of flowers. Oh wow. Okay. Um. Hello. You have. Gigantic flowers. What in the world? Uh, yes, let me let me pick you. Uh, wait, can I? Uh oh, did I did I break something? Okay, no, I didn't break anything. It wasn't giving me the prompt there for a moment. That was strange. Yeah, you have some like really big flowers on you. I do like how the space probe kind of shrinks them down, so it could act it could actually place them on its arm. I may as well also show off uh moving flowers to somewhere else. So, we can pick up this little flower right here, and we can just place it somewhere else. Yeah, as you can see, this doesn't destroy the flower. Uh, well, I mean, you can also destroy plants too, but why would we want to do that? Why would we want to destroy the ecosystem like that? I mean, we can probably, like, <laughs> do that in a different save file, but yeah, here we go. We created that plant, but with these kinds of flowers. So actually, what else should I combine this with? Should I combine it with, like, maybe these? These trees up here because these are like actual trees so how about I pick one of your flowers just bring this with me bring one of your leaves with me I'm gonna go back down to the beach and then combine you just to see what it creates do I create like a giant tree with these kinds of like like peanut butter cup flowers we're gonna find out in just a moment you know what I'll plant you right down here sure why not we'll go and investigate that other mountain uh, very soon as well, and I may actually take my my big plant with me here. Actually, can I even pick you up? Are you too large to be picked up? Oh no, you're not. You're not at all, because it still gives me the prompt. Actually, I just want to keep you in the water, so you know what I'll do instead? Maybe I'll, like, pick you up? Yeah. I'll pick you up and take you to that, to that other island, just so that I don't have to keep moving back and forth, because, see, the only thing that I don't like about this game is the fact that your space probe moves so freaking slow in this game, dude. There's no way to speed him up either, like pressing the shift key or control doesn't work. He's just way too damn slow for his own good. So it's better to just take this giant plant all the way with me to the other mountain so I can experiment more, splice some more geons. I also really love the music in this game as well, by the way. Nice ambience, and yes, this is, uh... Kind of, kind of what I expected. Yeah, essentially like a, like a tree, like a proper tree. Sort of. I'm really sure. But for now, I think I'm gonna move on from that. We're gonna go around the other side of the beach right here. Just in case there are some other types of flowers that I haven't come across yet, but... I don't think there's that many different types of flowers that you can experiment on here. Yeah, I can also show you that when you go into the water... Yeah, you're just gonna float over the water, so... I mean, I guess that does make sense. It's a space probe with, a essentially, a freaking jetpack. And before I end this video, I'm also gonna try and see just how far out into the ocean I can go. So, I'm gonna go over this way, see, because there are some plants behind here. So, my idea was to replant this boy right down here. It's a pretty strong space probe if it can, if it can lift, like, that large of a stock. Yeah, so take him over here, and then what I was thinking was that we could pick one of its flowers again. We're apparently picking it from below the ground. Alright, 
Well, that works. Then what I was thinking is that we could go over here and pick one of these, like, tiny little, uh, again, multicolored flowers, and then combine it and see what it creates. See what sort of abomination we create here. I'm sorry, beautiful abomination. All right, let's test this out. I don't know why this little, this little flower is, like, so small compared to compared to the large one. We're gonna see what it makes, though. Okay, well, there, there's a red stock, so I'm already, like, definitely creating something unique here. There does appear to be another beach area over this way. Yeah, with even more flowers, actually, so we're gonna go and investigate that, too. Ooh, what is this? What in the name of God is this? It just looks like... It looks like some sort of rock formation. Whoa. Hello? What in God's name did I create here? See, this is why I shouldn't have powers like this, because... Oh my god. Do it! Wait, what? Look at this. I, I wish this user interface would get out of the way. Hang on, I can't actually, like, disable this. Uh, wait. That didn't disable the thing. Yeah, but you can see the flowers though, right? Look at this, dude. I created, like, rainbow flowers. Oh, that's so pretty. That's so pretty. Wait. Now I definitely want to combine you with something. Look at this, man. Yeah, you got red, orange, yellow, green, blue. I created the colors of the rainbow, for the most part. Well, see? This is the kind of cool stuff you can make when you experiment in this game. You know what? I'm actually gonna take you with me, because you are by far my most prized possession that I have ever made in this game, so no, you're coming with me. You are coming with me. Yeah, cannot pick flowers while moving a plant, that's okay. I'm gonna bring you over here because, good lord, man. Yeah, we're just going back over over this way, but we're going to this to this beach. We're going to the beach over here. Yeah, because we have more of these these kinds of like peanut butter cup flowers. I'm just gonna refer to them as that from now on because they just they just remind me of that for some reason. I don't know why. Okay, we're gonna place you right down here, and we're gonna go and experiment. We're gonna go and experiment with some stuff. Oh my goodness, man, that's so pretty. Here we go. Pick a flower. Any flower will do, really, but we're gonna choose this one. Yeah, we're gonna see what this makes. I don't know if it's gonna be as spectacular as what I just created, but we'll see, okay? We'll see. There we go. I really wasn't expecting that at all, man. Like, look at that. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue. It's like a color wheel. It's so nice. It's so gorgeous. The stem itself is really bizarre, though, because it just looks like some sort of weird rock formation. But man, is it ever pretty. Uh, well... Oh god, what is that? Uh, I mean... Eh. Doesn't look as spectacular. Okay, but it's, it's definitely weird, though, because it's just like... It's like... Okay, what even... What even is this? Because all the flowers are at the very top. There's just like this one tiny branch right here that has a giant flower. It kind of looks like a dandelion, actually. Yeah, that's... Actually, that's more of what this reminds me of. They look like dandelion heads. That's what they are. Yeah, this right here is like a rainbow color dandelion head. Okay, well, that's neat, I guess, but... Here, take this with you... Take this with me. Maybe we'll combine it with one of these flowers. I'm probably gonna be ending the video off very soon, though, guys, because there's not... Not really anything else that I would like to... That I would like to go over regarding this game here. Just planting some flowers, and also splicing their genes for, for scientific reasons, okay? For scientific research, we're all doing this in the name of science, not conducting anything shady here whatsoever. Let's see what this is gonna make. Oh my god, this one is, like, fairly long. Yeah, it creates, like, another dandelion head. Another, like, like, I guess nicely colored, although, eh... I don't know. The colors are not that pretty to look at. Not as pretty to look at as this thing right here. Now that kind of makes me wish this was a real plant. Rainbow dandelions. Imagine that. Imagine if that were a real thing. Yeah, okay, that's that's kind of neat, I guess, but you know what? I'm gonna take you with me. I'm just gonna, like, I'm just gonna, like, haul you along wherever I go because I don't ever want you to leave my sight now because you're just too freaking gorgeous. That sounds a little bit strange in a different context, but, uh, I don't even know where I should put you down. I guess I'll put you down in, like, all the other plants that I created right here. Yeah, you know what? I'll just place you right down here. Sure, why not? Just plant you right down in there. Very nice indeed. Look at all this, man. Okay, I'll tell you one, one last thing that I may try to do. Combine this with one of my with one of my rainbow dandelion heads and just see what it what it produces. Um 
Okay, I just picked that out of the sky. I think I'm actually breaking the game right now. Okay, that was weird. We're just gonna pretend that never happened. I still cannot get over how, how exactly I created this thing. I mean, look at this. Look at that. That's by far the weirdest thing I've created in Mendel so far. Okay, so what is this gonna make? Is this gonna make, like, the same thing, but with these blue flowers? Well, well let's just see. Let's just see what it does. Oh my god, it's like there's spikes protruding out of it. Yeah, actually, that's more or less what happened. That's more or less what happens. Oh my god, dude. They're so large, though. Why are they so large? Hey, let me, let me try and pick one of these here. Yeah, they're so large, man. What in the world is that all about? Okay, and maybe try combining it with you. Okay, so I don't know what this is supposed to be, but it's, it's spawning in with, like, plants growing in the ground, which is odd. What is that little thing, like, protruding out of the ground right there? I don't know, it kind of looks like I created some sort of humanoid figure. Like, it has, it has legs, and a torso, and arms, and it's kind of disturbing to look at. I don't know about that, man. I don't know, that looks a little sketchy to me. Anyway, how about I go and, like, check out the one other location that I haven't actually been to. I've already been around that beach over there. Yeah, I mean, there there is also this location on top of the mountain, which barely has any flowers on it. Well, I mean, there's no plants on here at all. Yeah, that's the other side that we've already been to. Yeah, there's this other area right here with all of these plants that just seem to have, like, one leaf on them. So, I mean, there is this area that you can also explore as well. I mean, actually, that, that does give me an idea for, like, maybe one final thing. One final experiment that I want to make. Combine this with my rainbow dandelions. Oh, uh, okay, so there is actually an invisible wall right here, so I can't I can't move all the way out. Well that's disappointing. Not sure if that's gonna be the same case for the other side of the the island though, because I could still kind of venture out fairly fairly far into the water, so well we'll test it in just a moment, but one last thing we're gonna try and do here. Combine my rainbow dandelion heads with this like little leaf. Plant you right here. There we are. Let's take these, combine them together, and see what it produces. What sort of offspring am I gonna produce from this? I hope it looks as gorgeous as, as, as this beautiful boy right here. Um, okay, that's a giant blue stem. <laughs> alright. Is it just gonna create something with, like, one giant leaf on it? Is that what's gonna happen? Well, I mean... Hmm. God, that looks so strange, but, like... Okay. With just one gigantic flower, huh? How exactly did it pick this color, though? Maybe it's combining, like, the rainbow stuff with the blue leaf? Yeah. Just one little... It, it still creates the dandelion head, but it's, like, all sorts of, like, weird shades of purple. Fascinating stuff. Very fascinating indeed. I'm not saying that to be funny, by the way. Like, I genuinely think this is fascinating. Like, the fact that you can create rainbow dandelions? Like, what even is this game, man? Creating a little purple tree right here. What exactly is this gonna produce? Oh man, more dandelion heads? Yeah. I like how they just- they just bloom like that because they just- they just open up. And again, they're so large too. Why are they so freaking huge? Alrighty then, well, I think I'm done conducting experiments for now, guys, because I think that's pretty much where I'm gonna end the video off. Yeah, I also like how there's like, uh... Not even sure, like, little specks of dust floating around, if I had to guess. I think that's what these, like, little, little white triangles are. These little white particles. Yeah, I'm gonna go and see, uh, just how far out I can go into the ocean on this side of the, uh, of the island. And then I think after that, we'll, we'll be done. We'll be done with everything after that point. Maybe before that, though, I'll create, like, one little combination, like, one more. Then we'll be done for real. Okay, how far out into the ocean can we go over here? Not that far out. Damn it! Okay, fine then. Fine then, if that's how you're gonna be. If that's how it oughta be. Actually, I wanna try something out here. I can plant a flower on the slope for some reason. I wanna try planting it here just to see what happens. Let's just see what happens. I think other than that though, guys, that is pretty much where I'm gonna leave the video. So, that that is Mendel. I don't really have anything else to, to say about this game, really. Just a nice, relaxing little experience where you can... where you can go in and mutate some plants. 
and create all sorts of beautiful combinations. Again, it kind of reminds me of, like, No Man's Sky and the fact that all the flora in that game is procedurally generated. So, it, it definitely gives me some No Man's Sky vibes for absolute sure. There's no fauna to be found in Mendel, though. This alien planet may have plants on it, but it doesn't have animals. I mean, it would be kind of cool if you could splice their genes too to see what sort of horrible combinations you can make with them. Although that would probably be, uh, ethically questionable at best. Yeah, I got some nice little, again, nice little gigantic flowers just growing on the side of the mountaintop right here. And as far as I know, by the way, these plants I don't think ever die. These plants will never, uh, wither away, as far as I'm aware. So, all of your dastardly creations, well, I should say all of your beautiful creations, they'll stay here forever. They'll stay here for as long as this as this particular island exists, as long as you don't uh, reset it at any point. Honestly, just given the fact that I created these like rainbow dandelion heads right here, like these color wheel dandelion heads, I don't think I'm ever gonna reset this island now. You know what? I'll just I'll just call you that for now color wheel, because that's what you remind me of. You remind me of a color wheel. And we can view the species entry. Color wheel. Oh, okay, so that's interesting. So, you can only view... You can, like, view a preview of the species when you actually name them. That's the only way that you can actually, like, like, view, uh, their entry. Yeah, their species entry. Oh, but you can view their flowers, though, for some reason. That's kind of... unfortunate. Uh, hello? Um, excuse me? Game? Why are you all blurry all of a sudden? Wait, what in the world? Okay, I think I really am breaking the game now, guys, because... Wait. I can't press the tab key to open up the species entry all of a sudden. Okay, I'm definitely breaking the game now, guys. If I wasn't breaking the game before, I definitely am now, so I don't know what in the world is going on, but... I think I'm gonna- I think I'm just gonna have to stop for now because I- I don't want this thing to get, like, corrupted or anything. That's also interesting. Look- look at this. 54% genetically similar to Color Wheel. 87% genetically similar. And Color Wheel was one of its parents. Yeah, because I- I used one of its dandelion heads to create you. Okay, so that's interesting. 55%. 55%, 55, 55. So that's interesting. So it shows the genetic similarities to to some of my species here. 70%, 68%. This is basically like No Man's Sky. What in the world? 64% genetically similar. And you are Color Wheel, so you're 100% similar, obviously. 83% similar. 77, 56, 54. This is cool, man. Got all these stats as well, showing you how genetically similar these species all are. 75% similar. This is really neat. My goodness. 63% similar. And it seems like, like all of these, like all of the individual plants have different stats, showing how genetically similar they are to, to each other. Yeah, it's also kind of cool how the, uh, the user interface kind of sways along with the, with the trees in the wind. Because it's trying, it's trying to like reorient it, and uh oh, well actually, you can kind of, you can kind of break this as well, as you can see, because now it doesn't know where to place it. Man, this game, this game is just really neat, dude. Okay, what are those slope physics? Yeah, this game is just so freaking neat, man. I like this so much. The joy of this game comes from experimenting with, with all the different plant types and creating like different mutated species. And then when you actually name them, you can then view how genetically similar they are to one another. You know what? Just because you're kind of creepy... Humanoid? Because that's kind of what you- that's kind of what you- you look like to me. Okay, yeah, but then they're gonna say... Genetically similar to humanoid. Okay, now- so this one says 84% genetically similar to humanoid. Okay, so now it just appears to be saying, like, which ones they're- they're the most genetically similar to, because... Some are more genetically similar to humanoid, some are more genetically similar to color wheel, so it changes. Yeah, because now this is saying 61% to humanoid and 62%. Okay, but why does there seem to be like some discrepancy between the genetic similarities with these plants? Because they look like the exact same. They're the exact same species of plants, aren't they? So that's interesting how even like the same types of plants and flowers they, even they have, like, genetic discrepancies. Like, this says 61% and 62%. 
So where exactly is the 1% difference coming from? Jeez, man, I, I, don't, I don't even know what it is about this game, but I just, I just love it to freaking death. I know I've been saying that about a lot of games that I've been playing recently, but like this one especially. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna be coming back to this game a lot more often and trying to experiment with like different combinations because you have to remember that I'm a huge numbers nerd, so whenever I'm viewing stats like this, like the genetic similarities to different plants and the percentages, like, I, I love this sort of stuff. As someone who does consider himself to be a huge science nerd, I love it when I get to read stats like this in video games, and... I don't know, it just, it fills me with so much joy for some reason, and again, I don't know why. But anyway, guys, I'm gonna stop gushing about all of that for now. I am going to leave this video here. So, that is Mendel. This is a really nice, relaxing little game, and man oh man, it's, it's really gorgeous. Like, despite the fact that... The entire island here is comprised of, like, flat shaded polygons. It still looks absolutely gorgeous to look at, and some of the creations that you can make in this game, they're just so beautiful, man. You can create color wheel dandelions. It's so pretty. Okay, I don't know what it is about this game, but it's just, like, not only has gorgeous visuals, but the atmosphere and also the music as well. This is, like, a perfect game to play when you're, like, when you're, like, feeling really stressed out and you just need to find some escapism, you know, you just need to go to a fictional alien planet to just relax and, and do some gardening for a little while. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic, man. Kind of sad that this game doesn't have uh, more attention, though, because it, it really deserves it. I mean, in all fairness, these kinds of games are definitely niche, because I don't really, I don't really know how large of a market there is for gardening walking simulators, but it's cool, man. It's, it's really cool, and these are the kinds of games that I like to seek out every now and again, because, I mean, some of the stuff that's coming out within the indie gaming scene, it's really fascinating stuff. Like, even if the games themselves don't really live up to the hype, like, the actual ideas surrounding them, they're very unique. And the sad thing is, is that these games, for the most part, are probably gonna end up going unnoticed by most people, just because, I don't know, there just really isn't that large of an audience for these kinds of games. But I really want to try and bring more attention to these kinds of games, because they're just so... They're neat, man. They're just neat. And I just so happen to like really neat stuff. So, if you're into neat stuff as well, the link to this game is in the description. It's only available on PC right now. Not sure if it's ever going to come to other platforms, but again, if anything changes in that regard, I will let you guys know. Would I say that this game is worth the asking price of $10? Well, now that I've gotten to create uh, my beautiful color wheel plant over here, yes, it's definitely worth the $10. Absolutely, it is worth the $10 just for being able to create stuff like this right here. Absolutely it is if you want to channel those sorts of like No Man's Sky vibes. Anyway, I noticed that the game's actually starting to lag a little bit now, so I'm, I'm almost certain that the game is about to explode, so I should probably exit out of this game sooner than later. Uh, wait, does the tab key still work? No, the tab key is still broken. <laughs> yeah, before the game breaks any further, guys, I am going to leave the video here. It also seems like, uh... It, it does seem like these options don't actually work either, because I'm turned off the interface and also the player, which I assume turns off, like, my little arms right here, but they're not, they're not turning off. Actually, can I turn the music off? Okay, the music does turn off. Ambient noises, I assume, turns the ambient noises off. But these two options right here don't appear to be working, and that's strange. I don't know, it seems like there might be a few more bugs to iron out here, though, but... Either way, guys, that's where I'm gonna leave things for now. Links in the description if you want to purchase the game, as I've said already. And as always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video I make. Later!